Well, traditionally, the best part of the year is now gone. We're now in November, the clocks have gone back. Um, there's only short hours of, of daylight left. And it should be freezing cold, but it's not. It's, uh, it's, it's quite mild. To sit here in just a T-shirt, it's, it's 10 o'clock in the morning. I think it's the 3rd of November. So it, it's, it's not as cold as what it should be. So hopefully, we should get a few fish this session. Now, as you can probably tell by looking at me, I'm absolutely knackered. I've, uh, I've, I've had the, a bit of a case of the flu this week and I've been working nights as well. So I've not had a great deal of sleep. So the plan was get here yesterday, um, get the rods out, try and get everything settled before dark. It, it didn't quite go as planned and the last rod I had to just lob out as a, with a chuddy on the end rather than trying to find a, a, a nice little uh, clear spot. But I'm tired for a reason and that's because I've been catching. Um, I didn't get to bed until about midnight last night, uh, hoping for a for a good long night's sleep um, but about an hour and a half after, after I got to sleep one of the rods uh, signalled to take um, so I landed that one, it's 34 and a quarter pounds which I'll show you just in a bit later um, really really pleased with that at this time of year it, it's fantastic, the lake's not been fishing well at all it's all been a bit slow um, and then I, I got the rod back out um, probably uh, took, took me out about an hour and a half to get the rod back out, get everything settled um, just to unwind a little bit, got back into bed and uh, before I managed to get to sleep I got another take on the same rod uh, they must have been straight on the on, on the bag straight away just onto the, onto the stick mix that I put out there, it's, it just had a bit of uh, muscle digest in there with it, with the edge boily and uh, I'm thinking they're homing in straight away on that you know it's, it's got to be kicking out plenty of, plenty of food signals, if you can imagine pasteurised muscle just, just leaking out into the water it's it's fantastic for the fish, I, you know, I'm sure it's, that's what they're homing in on. Uh, but anyway, um, I had a bit of trouble, it went around a bit of the back of a weed bed and the line got caught around it and it, it took a bit to get the whole lot moving again, uh, but eventually I got it moving, played it right into under the rod tip um, and then the rig came flying past my face, uh, the hook pulled out. Uh, I, I'm not sure if it's a big fish or not, it, it more or less came, once I got it free for the weed it more or less came straight in, it didn't put up a, a particularly good scrap. Um, but when it was under the rod tip, it did feel a bit weighty. So I'm not sure if there was weed over, over the fish's face, and that's why it came in, and that's why it felt a bit heavy because of the amount of weed around, or, or whether it was a big fish that's, you know, half asleep because the water has got a little bit colder compared to what it was. Um, but I, I couldn't be happy with a, with a 34 and a quarter pounder. You know, really pleased. Here we are on November morning. It's a 34 and a quarter pounder, and very, very welcome indeed. Didn't put up much of a scrap. Bit of a strange shape to it, bit of a bit of a gut on it, and a bit of a battered old tail. It looks like it's happened sometime this year, and then uh, and healed a little bit. But uh, all the same, very welcome. <laughs> well, this is the rig I've been using quite a lot recently, and had quite a lot of fish on this year. Um, this bit is, is pretty standard stuff. It's just a bit of a uh, cable lead core uh, going down to the lead clip system. Um, the lead clip just changed depends on what I'm fishing over. I mean, if, if I'm over silt or um, a bit of soft clay or whatever else. I, I do prefer just like a lead clip like that. Though if I'm fishing on hard gravel, I don't mind going to a inline lead. Just it, it just sits quite nice, and it's, it's probably got slightly better hooking qualities. Um, and then just got a quick change clip down to about seven or eight inches of uh, end trap, 20 pound. I, I like the green stuff because it, it's quite a it's quite a weedy lake, so. You know, it just kind of blends in with, with, with the bottom that's out there. Um, so I six hook with a bit of shrink treatment to, to kick it around. And then what I've got is a double bottom bait. Or this one is a, is a, is a bottom bait and a pop-up. Depends what I'm fishing over. I just find it so so much more difficult for the fish to eject a, a, a double bait. Once, once it goes in its mouth, it's just something... It's just an awkward shape for it to spit back out again. Um, a lot of the time I tend to use two round boilers, but at the minute I'm using barrels. So what I've got is I've got a barrel on the end and, and there's a pop-up. Um, basically, how I do things is if I'm fishing over gravel, I'll fish two bottom baits because I know everything's on, on the gravel. Everything's nice and clean and there's going to be no difficulties. But if I'm over silt or I think there's a little bit of light weed or, or something in the area, then I'll, I'll fish one as a pop-up. Now. I tend to do things a little bit differently to everybody else, uh, with you know, in terms of a bottom bait and a pop up. So this one here, I tend to fish the pop up closest to the hook. Now, I know that sounds a bit strange. Most snowman rigs, it's got the pop up at the end, so it kind of drops down through the water columns and, and kind of fishes like that a little bit. But I don't really want to do that. I think it, it doesn't look that natural. Um, how I like to do things is 
have the pop up there so you've got two weight points. You've got the weight in the, in the bottom bait and you've got the weight of the hook. So when it goes down and sits on the deck, it's just sitting there, just in a little triangular shape. And when the fish come from the top, they can see both the baits. So it's not like a snowman rig where all you see is it just sitting up like that and all you can really see is the top bait. Um, you can see both the baits sitting on the deck. It just looks like it's a little hole in the bottom where, where both the baits have rolled into. It looks just looks a bit more natural. It's just that awkward shape. And that's counted for quite a lot of fish for me this year. And I tend to fish it over the top of uh, boiling crumb, as I've described earlier. So if you can imagine, that this will be sitting on the bottom, like that, and that will just sit on top of the boiling crumb, or the boiling crumb will just sit around it. And it's, it's basically just trying to create a different weight and something different for the fish to pick up. See, I've got some 12mm um, barrels there, I've got some 16 mils and I've got plenty of chrome and half baits. So the fish just get used to rooting around and picking up different um, shapes and sizes, really. So when they come to the one with the hook in it, they don't automatically know it's got the hook in it because you know they're used to picking up different weights. So that's basically the rig that I've been catching a lot of fish on this year. So give it a go. Well, it's first thing in the morning and I've just had something very special, um, a 40 pound common. Now, I joined the lake to catch a 40 pound common and I've, I've gone and done that, but not just a scrape 40, it's a proper 40. It's, it's the biggest uh, fish to be caught out of here this year. It's 44 pound and two ounces, I can't believe it. I've, oh, it's a, it's a new PB as well, new PB common. All the other uh, 40s I've caught are, are, are mirrors. So it's nice to join a lake with a few 40 pound commons in and it's nice to actually catch one. And um, I'm just over the moon, so I'm just waiting for the light to come right, waiting for the photographer to come, and I'm going to get some footage done of it. And uh, it is a cracker, it's a stunner, but you'll see that in a minute. So who's the pretty boy then? This is the parrot at £44, 2 ounces. Happy as Larry. Oh, it's, uh, it's getting, getting into its winter colours and it's, uh, it's at one of its top weights. I'm not sure if it's done this weight before. It's normally a scrape of 40, kind of upper 30, but it looks absolutely stunning. <laughs> As you can tell, it's uh, it absolutely beat the crap out of me last night. It, what a hell of a run in the early hours of the morning. Um, by the time I got my chest and got out to the rod, it got a few yards on me and it just didn't want to come in. It, it, it took me a merry old dance around two bays, got me stuck in several weed beds, and it must have took me half an hour to get it in. But uh, here he is, and I couldn't be happier. Right, here's the parrot again. Cut on the edge from Aquadynamics and a little um, fluoro pop up fish over the top of the bait. And, uh, oh, it's always nice to see him go back safely. Well done, Ed. Well impressed. <laughs> <laughs> PB common. Happy days, 44 pounds. There's always something special about catching 44 common. Ever since Clarissa. Right, it's now the last morning of the session. Um, I managed to sneak a third night in after the 40. Uh, you know, I was only supposed to do a two nighter, but I've juggled things around a little bit and I've, I've, I've done a third night. Um, it didn't pay off, unfortunately. All I managed last night was a bream. Um, but. Uh, I don't know why I didn't really catch. Uh, I suppose it's because it's now Saturday morning, so last night was Friday night, so it's got a bit busier down here. Uh, so I suppose a few extra lines in the water and a bit more extra bait going in, it, it might have just uh, let the fish know they're under a bit more pressure. I, I, I don't know. I mean, because I'm in a passing swim, I'm relying on the fish moving around the lake and good from different areas. And I think what's probably happened is uh, the fish have kind of found other people's bait and, and, and dropped on and fed on them or, or seen the lines, I, I don't know, but I'm not complaining, especially after the 44, I'm, um, I'm very happy about that, you know, you can't beat catching a new PB, can you, and especially a 44 pound common, I mean, to me, there's always something special about a 44 pound common, you know, I grew up in the days when um, Clarissa was, was the record, you know, um, the Chris Yates fish wasn't really recognised uh, for a long time for, for whatever reason, uh, and, and Clarissa, the, 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 the Redmere fish, um, was recognised as, as the record, so a 44 pound common was always always a magical fish and I'm glad I finally got there and caught it. Um, the scenario where I actually got around to catching it um, was because I'd had two bites off the same spot 
on the first night. Um, and nothing from the other three rods, because you'll have to fish four rods after November the 1st. Um, I thought about putting uh, two rods on the same spot, but the spot's only small. So when I cast the rod back out again, the, the, the reverse snowman rig that I showed you earlier, it landed right on the edge of the spot, so I thought, well, there's an opportunity to, to put another rod next to it. And uh, I, th I thought about rigs and stuff, and I wanted to do something completely different to the reverse snowman. Um, because I'm fishing loads of bits and pieces, you know, crumb, boily and, and whatever else, I wanted to fish a small, critically balanced bait. Um, so I uh, got out my little tub of pop-ups, got some uh, Flora pop-ups here. Yeah, these are the Edge from Aquadynamics, which I, I use on, um, you know, I use the can standard stuff to, to baiting up the um, the food store stuff, but this is a matching flavour, and this one's glugged in the, in the muscle digest and a, a bit of the uh, flavouring. Um, this is the young version. So what I did was, um, I had a look at a few colours and it's suddenly a yellow one. So I thought, on a size 10 hook, trim that down a little bit so it's critically balanced. Um, so I've got me old faithful little rig. It's, um, this is 15 pound mouth trap. I just wanted something a bit more supple than the, the 20. A little size 10. Um, that's a wide gate hook with a, with a bit of uh, tubing on just to help it kick round. Now, these, these baits are relatively new to the market, so I didn't quite realise how buoyant they were. So I just kept trimming away. I come up with that, um, which as you can see is absolutely tiny. Let me just get a proper one out. Now look at the, look at the difference to these two. You know, I was expecting just to take a little bit off, uh, but I ended up taking absolutely loads off. Um, so I'm, I think these have got brilliant applications with, with how buoyant they are for, for zig rig fishing. I know I'll certainly be using them, maybe just to tip a bit of black foam, but if they're this buoyant, then this should be fantastic for, for a bit of winter action. Um, but anyway, that's, that's the rig I caught it on. Now, because it's such a little bait, I wouldn't be confident casting that out w without a stick on. So, this is a stick mix I tend to use. I've got an old uh, subline case. And uh, this is the new stick mix from Aquadynamics. It's, it's got a few coarse ingredients in, but it's essentially it's the, it's the base mix uh, of the bait. And what I tend to do is I tend to add a, a bit of uh, muscle digest, which is this horrible gloopy stuff. It's, um, it's not very nice at all, but it's uh, the fish love it. And if, if you can imagine, it's, it's green lit muscle. It's been pasteurized, well blended, and then pasteurized. And so when that hits the water, it's just kicking out loads and loads of food signals. So just get a little stick. Always have a spare boiling needle, guess I drop that one. And just quickly push that down. And what that does, it just adds extra weight onto it. And if you push it over the hook point, like that, it just stops it catching any weed on the way down. So that's a, that's a perfect little parcel. It's got the, um, like I say, it's got the the green lit muscle digest in it's got all the pretty much all the ingredients of the base mix in as well and it just protects the hook point and, and just makes sure it goes out there properly so happy days and I've just knocked it all over the floor so yeah happy days very productive session um, I've only got one more session left in November I know it's only the start of November it's, it's bonfire night tonight um, but I've only worked out I've only got one more session left next week I'm spending a bit of time with the family and doing a few bits and pieces for greys and then the week after that, I'm down at the Sandown Show working on the Grazer's Chub Stand. So uh, if you're down at Sandown, just, just pop in and say hi and uh, come and have a look at the new kit. This Vantage clothing is fantastic. If you're looking for some winter kit or, or just some all year round kit, really, I mean, this is a soft shell jacket. It's, it folds down to nothing and it's nice and windproof and, uh, and shower proof as well. So uh, if you're looking for some new kit, then, uh, then get down to Sandown Show and come say hi. Um, but if you want any more information on what I've been catching and what I've been doing recently, I'm doing a uh, diary of a big cart magazine. So I'm writing regular in that, so um, it's tricky with the limited time that I've got, but luckily I'm still fluking them out, so um, give it a look.